An IRP is an integrated resource plan, uh, which in the electric industry is really just a formal way to say a long-term business plan. Any business that's looking out in the future needs to have a formal process to plan what their sales would be. For us, it's we call it load growth, and how they're going to uh, meet their needs of their customers. For us, that's future solar or future wind or future power generation resources, and now energy storage is coming on the scene. So an integrated resource plan integrates all the elements that you can think of in the future, from new laws, new regulations, how customers are gonna change the use of their energy in the future. It allows you to have, I would say, your best estimate to build a scenario that you can start planning towards. And it's very important in the power business to plan because this is one of the only industries where we cannot store our commodity. Electricity has to be generated and consumed instantaneously. And to do that perfectly with nearly 100% reliability, you need to be looking out 10 to 20 plus years in the future to ensure that you're ready to do that. So REU filed its first IRP in 2019, and we're required to update that every five years. So right now we're working on our 2024 integrated resource plan. The integrated resource plan is really important because it allows us to kind of develop a strategic plan and then make sure that everything that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis ties back to that. So before we kicked off our integrated resource plan update for 2024, we started by doing a community survey. A lot of people in the community participated in that. It was sent out to residential and commercial customers. And we were really trying to gauge what is most important to our customers so that we could use that in the development of our 2024 IRP. So we were trying to find out is reliability the most important thing to you? Is it maintaining affordable rates? Are you concerned about climate change and clean energy? And it turned out that our residential customers are actually a lot more concerned about climate change than they have been in the past. And that was really followed by affordability and then reliability. We were able to identify two different scenarios, one that meets the state's clean energy requirements and another one that exceeds them. And um, the first one is what we refer to as the net zero carbon by 2045 scenario. And that allows us to continue dispatching Reading Power Plant and maintain the reliability that we have from that. And it also allows us to keep rates affordable. We would generate carbon emissions from that and we would be able to um, purchase carbon allowances to offset the emissions from that portfolio. The other option is a 100% zero carbon scenario and that one exceeds the state mandates and would require us to decommission Reading Power Plant. Um, with that, we would have to buy replacement power, so we would have to find 186 megawatts of generation and it would no longer be on our system. So that has significant impacts to the affordability and reliability pieces of that scenario. So even though it's more green, um, not having a resource on our system does impact reliability. Once we had identified the two scenarios that we were modeling, um, we wanted to bring the community back in and we did that by identifying um, a diverse group of community members who we felt represented all of our customer classes. So we brought in small business owners, large commercial business owners, um, environmental advocates, people who represent diversity and equity and low income and brought together this group of people who then participated in a series of five workshops over the course of six weeks, and um, we basically turned them into resource planners. And we were asking them to decide which scenario they felt is the preferred plan that should be identified for the 2024 IRP. They ultimately decided on the net zero carbon 2045 scenario. And the reason why they selected that scenario is because they felt it met the objectives of the IRP, which was to meet or exceed this, the state's mandates while balancing affordability and reliability. 
Uh, so my role in selecting the preferred plan for the IRP was really going through several months of work with REU to talk about the different options available for the energy mix for the city of Reading and for Reading Electric Utility. And so the city of Reading presented us with all the, the different variables and the different options. And then at the end of the day, we made our selection based on all the information we were presented with. So at the Shasta EDC, we really represent the entire community in trying to attract businesses and retain and expand businesses in California and specifically in Shasta County and the city of Reading. And so the cost of energy and the availability, the reliability and the energy mix for the energy that's coming to businesses in our community is really important. It's what sets us apart as a community to have affordable, reliable and now green electricity uh, for our customers. It's a, it's a big deal. Customers do want to know where their energy is coming from. So being part of the IRP process was really helpful because I understand uh, what the variables and the inputs are for that. And I can help relay that to businesses that are looking to come to town. So the goal was really, we want to be conscious of cost and make sure that we can keep costs low at the same time meeting the goals that the state has put on utilities like REU. And I think the preferred plan we came up with really met both of those goals at keeping costs as low as they could be while meeting and potentially even exceeding the goals of the state of California. So I think that REU did an exceptional job in addressing all of our concerns. We talked a lot about sustainability and sustainable options. Uh, we talked about a lot of concerns uh, and road bumps that may come along the way. One of the big ones that we talked about was you know, making a plan um, and coming up with this IRP for the next 10 to 20 years is challenging when we don't yet know what the technology for sustainability is going to look like. There are so many new things coming out and it's exciting to hear about all the projects that people are working on in terms of sustainability, but when we don't quite know what that's going to look like, it's difficult to plan for. So we want to do everything within our scope to be as sustainable as possible, while also considering that a lot of things can change in the next 10, 20 years in terms of sustainable technology. I think that it was important for me to be involved in the process because REU really prioritized gathering as much information as they can for everyone's perspective. There's a lot of perspectives that we need to address in the area. Uh, I come to the table as a longtime resident who grew up in Reading um, and has a family growing up here, but I'm also you know, an employee that works here and cares about our local economy um, and the needs of my employers and other local businesses. Um, I'm also a Reading Ranchery, a tribal member and employee, so naturally sustainability is really important for me as well in terms of that. Uh, I think that we all live in this area and we all have a duty to sustainability and providing clean power and, and healthy and safe space for our families uh, and, and keeping this a better place for the future generations. With this video, we're also putting out a short survey and we really hope that people will participate in that because the feedback and input that we get from the community is something that we lean on when we're developing these plans. We want to make sure that everything that we're doing aligns with what the community's needs are um, today and into the future. So it's really critical for us to get that feedback from the community and make sure that everything we're doing um, meets the community's goals and needs as well.